Ah, okay, because it's only recording. Sorry. And okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was a two two step thing. Okay. All right. So welcome everyone for this session. Uh, build, this is the second session, building blocks, linear layers. Uh, so this session will be moderated by uh, Johan Dimen, Ordon Kedman, and myself. And we're going to have six uh, presentation. Uh, the first presentation will be exhaustive search for various types of MDS matrices by Abhishek Kezawarni, Santanu Sarkar, and Ayinedi Venkates Warlu. Sorry. And I think Abhishek will be uh, giving the talk. Yeah, thank you. So thank you for the introduction. My name is Abhishek Kesarwani. So I'm going to talk about the exhaustive search for various types of MDS matrices. Okay, so let's start. Okay, MDS matrices uh, are the key predictor in the design of the diffusion layer in many block cipher and hash function. A uh, MDS matrices uh, like these topics have been uh, extensively uh, have been studied by the researcher, and uh, and much amount of work have been already done in the search of lightweight MDS matrices. So MDS matrices cannot be sparse, and therefore it have a costly implementation. So there uh, have been many works, uh, many of the existing work uh, employ some ad hoc technique to search for efficiently implementable MDS matrices. But uh, uh, means the problem is that uh, when you do a ad hoc search, this means you are not doing over the full domains, but over the some subset of a domain in which uh, you are looking for the uh, lightweight uh, entries of a matrices, uh, or sometimes uh, the structure of those matrices, which have uh, uh, means uh, lightweight structure. Okay, so what is the problem is that? So means if there, there may exist a better mat MDS matrices in sense of uh, hardware implementation, which may be out of reach, okay? And sometimes uh, there uh, are MDS matrices of particular type, uh, and which doesn't exist over, uh, over some field or ring. Then in that case, and you are, uh, what you are doing, you are searching for lightweight MDS matrices. So this is an uh, unsuccessful attempt because uh, we don't have any such matrix exist. Okay, so these are the existing uh, men's work and their limitation. What we are doing here is exhaustive search. So what we are trying to give the, uh, the set of all the solution uh, from, here, from the whole domain Okay, so what is, uh, uh, please note that the exhaustive search, if you're doing it navally, it is not possible to do that. So what we are, our idea. So uh, we are restricting this, our search domain to a smaller domain. And uh, there here we use some equivalence classes. Uh, here, first of all, uh, we are consider MDS matrices over block map. MDS matrices, which are block matrix, and we are searching for those block MDS matrices uh, in, uh, in the general linear group, means in the over the uh, n cross n non singular matrices. And uh, if you do uh, exhaustive search, then it may be it may be not possible to do that navally, but yeah, you can do. If you restrict the domain to uh, a smaller domain by using some linear algebra tool, uh, and uh, if it is computational uh, doable, then you uh, what you do, uh, you find out the solution in the restricted domain, and uh, and with the help of some results, you generate all the solution from the uh, full domain. Okay, so. We're doing that, uh, what is the benefit uh, you have in case uh, uh, once you have the set of all the MDS matrices of particular type, you know uh, the best mat MDS matrices uh, which have the 
least or optimal cost with respect to some efficient matrix can be identified and uh, if the in the case when there doesn't exist mds matrix then we can avoid our effort and time in searching for that which doesn't exist okay so <clears throat> what we have got here uh, we have considered four type of mds matrices circulant hadamard companion and recursive type of uh, like sparse dsi test matrices here we have uh, uh, searched for uh, different parameter choices so the interesting result uh, we have shown in red color and uh, what we have got that uh, the, this was a question posed in Liu et al paper in fsc 2016 whether there exist a uh, involuntary uh, uh, circulant mds matrices of order 6 and 8 or a general linear group of order 4 or binary field so we have a negative result that we don't have such matrix matrices similarly uh, in case of uh, recursive companion mds matrices so uh, this was a uh, theorem or famous result that we don't have any uh, involuntary recursive companion mds matrices over field of characteristic 2 so but uh, we have got over the set of all non singular and cross and binary matrices so this uh, if you see here, this um so okay. sorry you you might have to to conclude because we have 5 minutes for each talk okay yes so and then uh, what we have in similarly uh, this problem was posed for the sparse dsi matrix matrices that uh, uh, there may there exist a higher order uh, mds matrices possible for sparse dsi yes we have uh, uh, with our exhaustive search result we have given that there is no such matrices is possible so uh, so overall uh, what we have Uh, we have also searched for recursive mds matrices from sparse dsi matrix for the finite field so this was same question in posed in to a tall paper so that there exist a uh, n cro eight cross eight mds matrices uh, sparse dsi mds matrices over f to the power a but uh, uh, we have no such matrix exist so sorry i would i would have to really um please ask you to 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 conclude here because we have five minutes for okay. each talk thank you okay thank you okay, okay so all right thanks thanks for your talk okay yeah yes. i think it's time to move on to the to the next talk uh, the next talk is lightweight iterative mds matrices how small can we go by shenli siwaisan dumping shi shaoyun li and lei hu and shenli will give the talk thank you Thanks for the introduction. Hello, everyone. I'm Xuan, and uh, I'm glad to present our work about how small can we go lightweight iterative MDS matrices. Iterative MDS matrices is a matrix which could be MDS after several iterations, and the iteration times is called orders here. And the, the iterative MDS matrices have some advantages and disadvantages. The advantages is The cost of implementation of iterative MDS matrices in terms of area is determined, determined by the matrix regardless of how complicated the MDS matrix is. And the disadvantage is the reduced area footprint comes at the cost of increased delays. Our direction here is to identify the theoretically smallest iterative MDS matrix with regard sorry. to the number. So, sorry, can you, can you put full screen for your... For your sides. Okay. Could you see my slide? So, so for me, I, I don't know. For me, the the slide I can only see the the main slide, but it's not updating. Okay. So I should uh, create a full screen, maybe. I know, Yuan, can you see the slide like changing or you, you want to see the main one? 
No, I see the, just the first slide. Okay, same for me. Yes. Let's so share a different uh, window. Uh, you shared in the wrong screen, yeah, maybe? Yeah, probably. All right, now we get full screen. Thank you. So can you see that slide too? Yeah, it works now, thanks. Okay, so I, I will start again. Okay, um, it's already MDS matrix is a matrix with, who, which can, could be MDS after several iterations and the iteration times we got, we got here, all the and it have, they have some advantages and the disadvantages. The advantage is the cost of implementation of iterative MDS matrix in terms of area is determined by the matrix regardless of how complicated the MDS matrix is. And the disadvantage is the reduced area footprint comes at the cost of increased delays. Our target here is to identify the theoretically smallest iterative MDS matrix with regard to the number of non-zero blocks required in its implementation. For iterative and MDS matrices in four by four over embedded words, the lower bound is five because it could prove a matrix with four or less than zero blocks couldn't increase the number of non zero blocks to four by iteration. For matrix with five non zero blocks to be iterative MDS matrix, the placement of the five non zero blocks is not arbitrary. We can identify four non zero four blocks from the five non-zero blocks such that any two of them could be in, are in different rows and different columns. And here is uh, one decommendation. The A1, A2, A3, A4 are in different, different rows and different columns and the A5 could be anywhere. To find the lightest iterative MDS matrix in four by four of embedded words with five non-zero blocks, we need to consider a matrix whose main component B are in type of this, which uh, four num zero blocks are in one, two, two, three, three, four, and four, one. Because the other cases could be transformed to a bar form via a series of invertible operations, preserving the area cost and the iterative MDS property at least right away. This is shows four non zero blocks in one, two, two, four, three, one, and four, three could be transformed to one, two, two, three, three, four, and four, one. And the unique non-zero blocks in Z seems to have 12 possible positions. Further transformation makes only just two cases reasonable. For example, we, we define the two the matrix P and Q and the four positions here are equivalent. The B is the, B is the same and Z in one, four, two, one, three, two, and four, three, they are, they are all equivalent by transformation. And for the only two structures of nine, five nine zero blocks matrices, we can further give some restrictions on their entries. That is for the four nine zero blocks in B, we could, we could certain, we can assume that a, we could verify that a, the four nine zero blocks, A1, A2, A3, A4 must be uh, singular. And then we start a chair search in the minimized form, that is A1, A2, A3, A4, all set to, set to be permutation matrix. And then another matrix in Z could be arbitrarily small. And luckily we find a three XO account matrix whose 451 powers is MDS. And the previous matrix with only three XO area cost is only of theoretical interest because the, the cycle is about 400. So to, so the question is, can we find a more reasonable iterative MDS matrix with small minimal MDS orders? For matrix in four by four over four bit words, and then the, the, with five non-zero blocks, the exact small, the exact row bound of the order is 14 because we do the search. With the same four, two forms as before and set the increased order from four. And then we find a matrix at the order of 14. And actually we find a lot of matrix in, four, in order 14. So, and we still need to search for a minimal 
Excel account, and here is uh, the matrix we found with Excel account seven. And here are our results. In conclusion, we search in iterative MDS matrices without any special structures given theoretically analysis and compared to previous constructions. And uh, we identified a theoretical probable lightest iterative MDS matrix in four by four or four bit words with minimal non-zero blocks and find the uh, iterative MDS matrices of various dimensions, which are not only lighter than previous result, but also rich level of bounding in terms of latencies. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for your talk. All right, we move on to the third presentation of the session. Um, this uh, article is Swap and Rotate, Lightweight Linear Layers for SPN-Based Box Ciphers. This is an article by Subadi Banik, Fatih Bali, Francesco Regazzoni, and Serge Vaudenay. And Fatih will uh, give the talk. Uh, thank you. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. I can see. OK, thank you. Um, I'll just quickly dive in. Let's have a bit of nostalgia and remember these uh, retro gaming devices. And in this presentation, I will also describe um, an imaginary gaming device uh, that is shown on the left. In this one, you have a small screen, and then inside you have boxes. The boxes contain the numbers in the decreasing order. And then the, uh, and then the goal is to reach the given uh, sequence th uh, that is uh, just uh, put, on, uh, put, put under, the, uh, under the screen. And then the player has uh, two buttons. One is the swap button, and the other one is the rotate button. So to, let's see how the game works. If the player presses the rotate button, then, uh, then, the, then the all sequence that is uh, in the screen will be rotated towards the left by by position. As you can see here, we have all the elements rotated towards the left. And if, you, if the pr player presses the swap button, first they will perform a swap operation inside this uh, pink colored boxes, and then a rotation is still applied. So the difference between these two buttons is this whether a swap operation is done before the rotation or not, and both of them do actually rotate. So the goal of the player is to reach to a given sequence under, under the screen. And um, the, the, the score is determined based on the number of button presses uh, the user uses. Uh, uses. So if uh, the player presses less, fewer buttons, then the player gets better score. So this is a very simple game. And then in this example, for example, you can have some initial state that is given here. And uh, let's say this is the goal. Uh, for example, you could just press swap buttons three times and then rotate buttons one more time and, and finally. And then you would reach to this sequence. Uh, and that is not necessarily the optimal strategy here, but, it, but this is just a dummy example for this first version of the game. Now we can update our game and then call it 1.1-present. Uh, as you know, the present is a 64-bit uh, state block cipher. And inside you have a bit permutation layer. So there's a permutation layer which describes uh, how each bit is supposed to move around inside the state. So in this case, we can use this game as an analogy. So in this one, in this uh, updated version, now we have 64 boxes, as you can see here. And uh, now the player will be given an additional power of uh, marking two colors by pink color here. So essentially, the user will determine which uh, swap operation will be enabled, and the game will start. And then, the, again, the goal of the user is to now uh, reach the application of the present permutation on this given sequence. Um, so we, uh, with our search, we were able to find uh, the, the best strategy that, that we were able to find uh, was to place the swap positions to uh, 60 and 63, as you can see here. And then uh, our best strategy took uh, 1,472 steps so that we have to essentially press that many number of buttons before uh, completing the present uh, permutation. So that is not very impressive in, ter in terms of number of steps. So then we have uh, decided to update the game again. In this one, the player is actually able to introduce two swap operations, which means that you will have two pair of boxes which can exchange their content before the rotation. And now the game will have actually a three buttons. So the user can actually either press swap one, which will maybe swap uh, pink colors and then swap two will uh, swap green ones. And then again, rotate will not do any swap, just rotate. And then in this, with this game setting, we were able to do the present permutation layer in 128 steps. 
which is a significant reduction compared to the previous uh, version. Okay, so let's do one more update to our game. In this, the final version of this game, now we will uh, put another strict requirement. So now in this version, the player must complete the old game in 64 steps. And now the player is uh, flexible in, um, uh, in the number of subs uh, that is introduced, introduced into this pipeline. Uh, so, the, for example, as a trivial solution, the player could uh, introduce uh, many, many swap operations and then uh, make sure that everything is done in 64. But the goal and the score is uh, determined based on how uh, so, the, so the strategy and the goal from the player is to uh, put fewer number of swaps as possible. And, and, the, and the solution that we were able to find is to put exactly six swaps uh, that are uh, put in the same color in this, in this pipeline. And then we were able to complete everything six to four steps. Um, so that is basically yeah, the game analogy of what we have done in the paper. And in the, in the paper, what we did was actually a one bit serial implementation of the present and gift block ciphers, a 64 bit variant of gift. And there we, were, we, we had to implement uh, the pipeline. And then in the pipeline, we had to implement the permutation layer as efficiently as possible. And this is uh, basically the game equivalent of uh, the underlying problem. And that is uh, all I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for the talk. All right, so we move on to the fourth uh, presentation for this session, Optimizing Implementations of Linear Layers by Zhejun Xiang, Xiangyong Zheng, Da Ling, Zhen Zhen Bao, and Sasha Zhang. And I think Zhejun will give the talk. Hello. <laughs> 要离开会议啊 We can hear you, yeah. Uh, I can't share the screen. You, you cannot share the screen? Or you're, you're trying to share the screen? Do you, do you know how to share the screen? You see the button on the below, share screen? Yes, wait. Okay, maybe Okay, maybe if you if you're not ready for the talk right now, maybe we, we move to the to the next talk. If if the the speaker is ready, then you can we're gonna put you at the last uh, at the last position. Okay. And maybe meanwhile you can you can try to to, to see if uh, how how to, to share. Okay, okay, okay. 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 So uh, I hope I hope the, the the next speaker will be ready. Uh, so maybe we can move on to the next uh, the fifth uh, article. So efficient search for optimal diffusion layers of generalized first network by Patrick Derbez, Pierre-Alain Fouque, Baptiste Lambin, and Victor Molimar. And uh, I think Baptiste, maybe, would give the talk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you share your screen? Yes. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Thanks. Nice. <clears throat> OK, so uh, thanks for the introduction. And uh, yeah, we'll try to uh, quick, quickly describe what we did uh, in this work. And so, yeah, we focus on the general, uh, generalized system networks. So just to quickly record, we have it's a way to be the block ciphers and the run function is like uh, a few, uh, uh, several uh, phase sets in parallel and just a uh, simple permutation on uh, each block. And what we are uh, interested in is uh, the diffusion round. So this diffusion round is essentially trying to um, see how each block diffuses after um, a given number of rounds. So for example, if we uh, take the first block uh, here in red, uh, we can see that after two rounds, it diffuses to only, well, two blocks and three blocks after three rounds, etc. And we continue until we reach full diffusion. So um, this first block diffuses to each and every block of the cipher text. And we can see that in this case, for this permutation and this block, we need six rounds. And we can do it for the next one. Here we need five rounds and again and again. 
And so what's, in, what's interesting about this is that it only depends on the permutation pi that we can see here. And it also gives some lower bounds on um, for uh, uh, security against uh, impossible and integral attacks. And we can do it so in the forward direction for encryption, but also for decryption. And the same way, we just study how it propagates. And once we have done this for uh, every block and in each direction, um, well, we just take the maximum number of rounds that we need to reach full diffusion. And this is what uh, is defined as a diffusion round. So in this case, uh, six rounds. So this was um, already studied um, 10 years ago at uh, FSC by Suzuki and Minematsu. And especially they gave some uh, lower bound on the diffusion round, depending only on the number um, of block uh, uh, K. And um, they did an exhaustive search and especially noticed that all optimal permutations are even odd. And I will talk about them a bit later. And they also give um, very nice uh, generic construction to reach a decent uh, diffusion round, but uh, in general, not optimal. And then last year, Koshwaitl um, went a bit further. And by focusing on even odd permutations, they were able to give an equivalence relation and find all optimal even odd permutation for up to 26 blocks. And they also gave um, a good candidate for 32 blocks, as well as uh, 64 and 128. But um, candidate for 32 blocks was actually already known from the previous work by Suzaki and Minmatsu. So well, the question we asked uh, ourselves was, OK, is this permutation on 32 blocks actually optimal? Because um, so this permutation has a diffusion round of 10 rounds, but the lower bound that we know says that maybe there could be some in uh, nine rounds. And so what we did in this work is that we were able to actually solve this problem by giving a new characterization for the diffusion round. And we were able to compute a um, um, result for up to 42 blocks. And I will not talk about it, but um, we have a very quick security evaluation. So I'll try to explain quickly how does this, this new characterization look like. So we are focusing only on even odd permutation. So permutation, which so that um, the image of an even number is odd and the image of an odd number is even. And we can split um, this permutation into two parts, P and Q, depending on uh, the fact that it's even odd. And to get our uh, characterization, we study what happens in an ID diffusion. So we diffuse, um, always diffuses two different blocks for now. And so if we start with uh, one block of index 2 to J, and we see after one round, OK, it diffuses only to an even block. So it goes through the permutation P. And then it diffuses to two blocks, because now it's uh, on the odd blocks, and et cetera. And we can just study how it diffuses like this. And we see especially it diffuses to um, this block of index 2 and um, J05, uh, which is, can be computed only from J and P. And we can do this for, well, every possible block at the end. And for example, for five rounds, we reach this uh, we get this diffusion set. So it's just a set of expression in P and Q. And the idea is that if this diffusion set contains every number between zero and K minus one, then we have full diffusion. So using this diffusion set and the uh, equivalence relation from the previous work by Kosho et al, we can uh, actually design a very efficient um, search algorithm. And especially um, we use a branch and word approach to have an earlier uh, abort um, strategy. Um, which is very different from the previous work, which were all uh, exhaustive search in some sense. And because I'm already running late, um, just to give a, a quick uh, example. So especially um, for, such a, for 32 blocks, uh, we can show that the previous permutation was not optimal. We can actually have one reaching full diffusion in nine rounds. And so yeah, we found all optimal permutation for uh, the first two cases. So the first two cases, so up to, uh, uh, 34 blocks except for uh, 38. And for 38, 40, and 42, we have an, uh, uh, some permutation on 11 rounds, but we are not sure if it's optimal because we were not able to show anything for uh, 10 rounds. And so, yeah, um, thanks for your attention. And for more details, I invite you to watch the full presentation or uh, read the paper. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right, we move on to the sixth paper. DASTA Alternative Linear Layer for RASTA by Phil Eborn, Gregor Leander. And Phil will give the talk. Yes. All 
All right, you can see the side. Thanks. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Phil Hebon, and I will present uh, DASTA, which proposes an alternative linear layer for raster. And this is joint work together with Gregor Leander. An open question in research is uh, the minimal number of end operations a cipher needs to still ensure security. And uh, Rasta is a family of stream ciphers, which performs very well in this area. The number of ends per encrypted bit and the end depth is between four and six, depending on the version of Rasta. And, uh, there are many examples where the end count is important for like fully homomorphic encryption in hybrid use with a symmetric cipher, multi-party computation, or masking, which is important for side channel resistance. Um, let's recapitulate the structure of raster first. The uh, initial state is the key, and one round consists of two parts. First, we have the affine mapping, which is uh, generated by an expandable uh, output function, the XOF, uh, and it takes as uh, input a nonce and a counter. Uh, the, uh, this generation is public, and the fine layers are newly generated for every block. The second part um, of the round is the nonlinear layer, uh, the chi function of degree two and it is generalized from the chi function of Ketchak. And in the end, there's a final affine layer and the key is XORT to the state. Our main motivation was to design a deterministic approach, which uh, doesn't need an XOF. And in first place, we can give security arguments which don't rely on the XOF and second, the, the performance uh, can be increased. Now in Duster, the fine layers are just determined by a counter. And therefore, we need a set of fine layers from which the counter can choose. We choose uh, the set of uh, fine layers as the ith power of a bit permutation P composed with a fixed linear layer L. And uh, the linear layer is constructed from a BCH code, which guarantees a large branch number. And the large branch number ensures good diffusion and the very low uh, probability for linear trails. The bit permutation P consists of many co-prime cycles, which leads to a high order of uh, the bit permutation. And in um, the FHE setting, um, Duster is depending on the version 15 to 20% faster than uh, Rasta. And this uh, advantage is mainly based on the reuse of linear layers, which within uh, one block generation of DASTA, while uh, RASTA uses every linear layer just once. And in the offline setting, uh, the speed up is much more significant. There, uh, DASTA is 200 to 400 times uh, faster uh, since we save the overhead of the XOF. We see a couple of further research directions. Uh, first, uh, the block sizes in Rasta are chosen very conservatively, and maybe it can be reduced by taking our improved security analysis into account. And we used BC BCH codes for the linear layer, which we found most straightforward, but other code choices could also be interesting. Finally, a more structured linear layer could lead to better security arguments or performance improvements. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for the talk. Um, okay, maybe we can try to go back to the fourth talk. Uh, Zijun, are you, are you here? Can you share your screen?
Okay, seems to be working now. Yeah. Okay, so this is optimizing implementation of linear layers, and Zhejun Xiang will be presenting. Uh, Zhejun, we cannot hear you. Can can you try the mic? We we can see the side, but we cannot hear you. It seems like you're not muted. I, I can see you're not muted. There is some volume. Yeah, there is some there noise. Is. <laughs> we we can we can actually just yeah. But I'm not sure if this is coming from 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 him or maybe from from someone else in the in the ah. chat maybe. Okay, we, we we cannot hear you now. I think yeah, I think we have uh, yeah. I, I think we better move on to the to the to the starting with the question at this at this point. Um, maybe you can. Uh, I don't know if it's possible, okay, to to start a breakup room so that we can test this sound separately. If it's possible, uh, that would be great. Otherwise, I think we can move on okay. to the question at this point. Yes, we can do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so we already have a few questions. And the first question is for Fatih from Anne. Um, is it possible to exhibit lower bound on the number of steps needed for implementing an n bit permutation with a given number of swaps and or characterize the worst situation? Uh, Fatih, if you want to answer that. Uh, do you mind repeating it? I, I missed the first part of the question. So. Anne is asking whether you have looked at uh, using different mixings for each round, something that resembles, uh, sorry, I'm confusing two things. Is it possible to exhibit a lower bound on the number of steps needed for implementing an n-bit permutation with a given number of swaps and or characterize the war situation? I, I'm afraid so, I didn't understand. I, I heard you, but I didn't understand like exactly. Ah, so, so I think the, the question is, you're you're playing this uh, game. Like a, yes, yes, exactly. And the question is whether you can give a lower bound. So if I'm telling you here is a, what is the lower bound? What is the best yes. or the worst case scenarios you can reach? Yes, exactly. So theoretically, we don't have like we, we didn't have in the paper the proof type of like the lower bounds. It was more like a like a like a heuristic search that we did on paper, not like with an algorithm. Uh, in, in every step, what we were trying to do is uh, have a permutation. Uh, for example, we take present, we look at the permutation very carefully. And in general, it turns out that most of the permutation layers have a very good structure because designers have some kind of organized way of uh, moving the bits from one SPOC to the next round of SPOC inputs. Uh, therefore, uh, we were able to use that information to come up with uh, say uh, fewer number of swaps, but um, I, I I cannot see exactly how one would exactly prove that that is the lower bound. For example, for present, we couldn't actually beat the six swap for 64 cycles, 64 steps uh, lower bound. Even though we tried, we couldn't find it. But uh, that, that that is just far away from saying that there's a proof that that is the lowest. Unfortunately, uh, I guess I don't have an answer for that. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, I would also have a question for Fatih. So I think it's very, uh, let's say, intellectually interesting problem. Um, but do, do you, why are the real world applications for this? Or maybe I missed it. So uh, yes, I didn't really give why we, uh, we care about this game. Yes. Is, so, we, we, so there was, um, I think either 2016 or 2017, there was a one bit implementation of AS. Uh, Skinny, I think they had the present implementation from, uh, from Jeremy John, I think they had these implementations. And there uh, we realized that for a one bit block ciphers such as present and gift, if, one, one, if someone tries to implement the, in, in such a similar fashion, the permutation layers turns out to be a, such a problem. Yeah. 
as a uh, if I mean I think the 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 straightforward solution is to just put a bunch of maxes for each of these flip flops, yeah. but that would be very ugly and non non elegant way of solving the problem. So we thought uh, that if we had some kind of very basic operations like swaps, which are uh, very cheap in hardware, so you just put uh, two maxes. And then we thought, well, maybe there's a way to express this permutation through these operations. Okay, I see. It just looked like an interesting mathematical problem, to be honest. Yes. But it, it did eventually lead to reduction of the area. So we had the uh, smaller, we had much smaller present and gift implementations uh, from the previous papers. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that was the goal, I think. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so the next question is to Phil by Raghavandra Rohit. Um, he's asking whether you have considered instead of the BCH codes, the other linear codes, for example, the GOPA codes or something else. Um, no, we did not try it. Do you think these will make better results or it's just, you just pick BCH because it was the easiest to work with? Uh, it was the easiest uh, to work with, and uh, we actually were caring the most about uh, the branch number. And uh, with BCH codes, uh, it seemed to uh, be easy to uh, create codes with a large branch number. Thank you. Okay, then uh, can I ask a question now? Um, there was a question for Abhishek, so the first uh, speaker. Okay. Uh, uh, so in probably in uh, your paper you explained, but in your presentation now you didn't uh, explain what is the cost metric that you are using. So uh, well, how do you determine the efficiency of your uh, matrix? Okay, so in this paper we have uh, used uh, two metrics, DZOR and SZOR. And we have uh, looked at the cost of the entries. This means we have looked at the locally optimization and we, uh, we haven't tried the global optimization tool to calculate the efficiency. Okay. Thank yes. You. Can you repeat that? Because I didn't get and, it. So uh, exactly the cost metric? Uh, the cost of the matrices is... Uh, sorry? Is what? Okay, Co the cost of the matrices we calculated by uh, calculating the cost of uh, overhead cost and the fixed cost uh, means uh, the cost of the e each entries and the fixed cost and uh, uh, means uh, we look at the local optimization instead of global optimization, but uh, yeah, it, in hence. There have been many works uh, have been done uh, which look for global optimization. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, then I go to R again. So uh, this is a quick a quick question to Baptiste. Um, have you looked at switching between the the mixings in different rounds? There is something called the uh, diffusion switching mechanism for GFNs, but this is inside the the matrices of the round function, but the question is, have you tried moving around? Um, so we didn't because it's actually already done. Uh, I will link you the paper, uh, but uh, it's a paper by uh, Daniel Kalles, Leo Pera, Angela Kometzer, uh, Sebastian Rammacher, and Christian Rehrberger about um, improving the linear operation for uh, low MC. And uh, they actually show that if you allow to uh, change permutation between each round, you can actually always reach uh, the lower bound gi uh, given by Sutaki and Matsu. So essentially, you can always reach uh, the best, uh, and, uh, smallest number of rounds to reach front. I, I will link you the paper in the screen chat. Okay, thank you very much. Then I have a follow up question for Baptiste. So you consider um, diffusion more like the avalanche or uh, like. A, Let's say dependency, I guess. Or did you study also trail bounds for these structures? So we only focused on the um, diffusion to find the uh, as um, uh, as matrix. Yeah. Say okay, this is optimal. But once we um, I got uh, all the optimal diffusion for each number of blocks, uh, we did um, 
very quick security analysis, so only like structural high level and nothing on mid level. Uh, we only did it on uh, for differentials. Uh, we didn't have time to do it for linear, and then we I forgot I forgot about it. Um, so it's in the paper, and there is a section about it uh, where we compute the number of active S boxes and uh, how many rounds we need to reach um, some uh, given numbers. And something interesting, which was uh, which we noticed, is that. Even if our permutations are optimal for diffusion, they are very far away from uh, being the best for the number of uh, active S-boxes. And um, so this is something we noticed, like uh, they are, don't have a very good uh, number of uh, active S-boxes. And this was noticed again in a recent paper at SAC, uh, the WARP uh, block cipher. We can also link it. So, um... You can have good diffusion, but it can be the case that uh, for trails, you are you don't have good diffusion, right? Yeah, and essentially, the, I'm pretty sure it's, I mean, it's because it's very different. Like diffusion is just, you know, propagate and there is no cancellation. Um, so you can like go through an XOR a very high number of times and- we found that out in the 90s. Huh? That's, we, we know that for 20 or 30 years now, so. And, uh, okay, I'll go back to R. So a quick question for Shun Lee, who's actually already answered, but if you want to elaborate on that. Um, Juan Yuan Damin is asking, uh, did you consider matrices that are not MDS after some iterations, but do have a high branch number? Uh, you may achieve a better uh, trade-off between the, the performance and the security. Shun Lee? Not sure I see in the chat. Just a second. Yeah, it's uh, having to open several uh, windows. Yes. No, not in a participant anymore. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Um, in that case, may, maybe we can maybe uh, mention Daniel Ber uh, Dan Bernstein's comment about uh, BCH being special cases of uh, co GOPA codes. So if Dan, would you like to explain that or for a second, you can unmute yourself. So it doesn't have audio. Wonderful. Um, OK. Did we miss any of the questions? Let's see. So, so I think the problem, uh, the audio problem, has been uh, resolved for the for the first talk. Oh. So maybe we can, yeah, we can try again and, and, and one last time <laughs> Perfect. to get this talk going. Uh, Zijun, can you sh can you? Turn on your camera. Can we hear you to see if it works? Okay, I can hear you. Okay, we can hear you now. Perfect. All right, so you can share your screen if possible. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, thank you. All right, so this is optimizing implementation of linear layers by Zhejung Xiang, Xiang Yung Zheng, Dalin, Zhenzhen Bao, and, and Shasha Zheng. And Zhejun will be giving the talk. Okay, hello everyone. Our work is to optimize implementations of linear layers. Uh, basically, there are two methods for optimizing linear layers, the local optimization and the global optimization. In this talk, we focus on the global optimization. It is straightforward to use the XOR count to estimate the cost of a matrix. Generally, we have three kinds of XOR, the direct XOR, the general XOR, and the, and the sequential XOR. In this talk, we we focus on the sequence XOR in the following. We note that there are three kinds of elementary matrices. The first one is interchanging two rows, and this matrix has a low cost. The second one is multiplying a row with a non-zero number. Since we consider the binary field, this does not change the matrix, 
So we will not consider this kind of matrix. The last one is adding a row to another multiplied by a non-zero number. And this matrix calls the one SXOR. From linear algebra, we know that any invertible matrix can be decomposed as the product of elementary matrices. Because we only consider the binary field, this theorem can be adapted as any invertible binary matrix can be decomposed as a product of type one and type three matrices. In this case, the cost of a matrix is equal to the number of type three matrices in its decomposition. So if we can reduce the number of type three matrices, we can reduce the cost. Uh, in order to decompose a matrix, we can use Gaussian elimination. However, this does not get a satisfactory result. So we present a hybrid method here. Each time we try all possible elementary operations and pick the one that reduces the most number of ones. This is because we want to get the identity matrix in the end and the identity matrix contains the least number of ones. So if we can reduce the number of ones as many as possible in each step, we can expect a shorter matrix decomposition. Uh, after we get a matrix decomposition, we can always rearrange the order of matrices. This property allows us to put all type three matrices on the left and all type one matrices on the right. For the sake of simplicity, <laughs> we will always assume that any invertible matrix can be expressed as a product of type three matrices. Now we have a matrix decomposition with only type three matrices. So we present seven, uh, seven reduction rules to reduce the length of the decomposition. Each rule can reduce the cost by one XOR. However, these reduction rules can only be applied to consecutive matrices. We know that matrix multiplication does not generally satisfy the commutative law. This property presents, uh, presents three special cases that a matrix multiplication fulfills the commutative law. So we present the framework of our reduction algorithm. The algorithm takes a matrix decomposition as input and picks three matrices from the decomposition. We denote the white, the gray, and the black bars, the three matrices. If these three matrices matches one reduction rule, then we check if they can be moved to be consecutive. For example, we check if the white matrix is, is commutable with all matrices in the orange block. If so, we can reduce the cost by one. Using the reduction algorithm as the subroutine, we first decompose a matrix using the hybrid method, then pick a segment that is the orange block in the figure. This segment contains several type three matrices. We can multiply these matrices to get an invertible matrix and then decompose this matrix using the hybrid method again to get an equivalent decomposition. So the green block is equivalent to the orange block. Then the reduction algorithm is applied to this decomposition to reduce the cost. And we can repeat this procedure many times until we find good implementations. So this table shows the applications of our algorithm, particularly the cost of AES mixed column is 19 to X ors. Uh, another advantage of, uh, of our search algorithm is that if M is decomposed as N type three matrices, the inverse of M can also be decomposed as, a, as N type three matrices. As a direct application, we can implement the inverse AES mix columns with 19 to X ors. Uh, so that's all thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so maybe it will be interesting if you go back to your overview slide where you show um, Are you still there? Zijun, are you still there? Yeah, it's... Okay, okay. Okay. Oh, hi. So if you can uh, re-share your screen and go to the overview slide, that's maybe interesting to look a bit at what you achieve. Is that possible? 
Okay. Yeah, I think it's the, the not the last slide, but the one before last. Uh, that one. This one? No, that not that one. Uh, the one before this, I think. Yes, this. So maybe it's interesting to look a bit at what you achieved. Can you make it bigger? Okay. Can you see it? Yes. So, so um, what are your biggest successes here? Uh, so where you uh, improve the state of the art uh, the most? <clears throat> where can improve the implementations in most of the cases? Uh, especially for 32 times 32 matrices. Okay. For, small, uh, for, small matri for small matrices, the results are, are equal good, are equally good. Okay, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the, <clears throat> the 32 bit matrices, those are the best. That, that, that's where you score best, right? Yes. Okay. So a, a follow up question, if I may. It seems that in some cases, uh, the results are Less good. If you look, for example, at AES, where it's 32, or uh, sorry, in some cases you get uh, slightly worse results, if I'm not mistaken. Am I right, or I'm just uh, mixed some tables? Uh, uh, sorry, I, I can't understand. Uh, okay, I, I will ask again. There are cases that it seems like you're not improving the previous works. For example, Fox and Hostel and Whirlpool. Can you give a hint why this happens? Uh, what is the block that prevents you from doing that? Sorry, we, we do not know why this happens, but sometimes experiment cannot reduce, uh, cannot return the best result. Mm, I, I have also one, one quick question. Um, you were saying that you also consider the inverse uh, matrix of the S. Do you consider having both the uh, normal direction and also the, the inverse at the same time? Because that's what might happen in some implementation when you need both directions. And you mean that the, the implementation of the inverse matrix, right? I mean, what, what happened if you, if like, is there, is there a possibility to combine some part of the circuit to do both the encryption and the decryption? Potentially, did you? I don't know. Maybe try to explore that. Uh, I sorry. Okay. I, I can't. I, I can't answer that. It's all, it's all right. Okay. I think anyway. Time time is running out. So I will I will ask the question on the, on the on the chat. And, and if you want, you can reply there. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, uh, everyone. I think this is it for, for this session. Um, and I think we have a break uh, again of about 15 minutes uh, for the next uh, session. Uh,